What is up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of our NBA DFS DraftKings Picks videos, this time for Tuesday, November 22nd. I am your host, Justin Bales, and we have a smaller four-game slate. Before we do get started, we are doing um, essentially two different promos at the moment. I know a lot of people ask me uh, generally what type of promos we have going. The first one is for NFL on Thursday. Uh, go to dfskarma.com slash Thanksgiving, and you can get our core plays for only $5. Uh, that is obviously for Thanksgiving. And then this one is for uh, more subscribers, not just NFL. But using the promo code TURKEY gets you 25% off of any of the following subscription. MVP, props, NBA DFS, NFL DFS, college basketball, or college football, both DFS for those as well. Um, so the promo code TURKEY, uh, when purchasing any of those, will get you 25% off any, any of them. And then once again, dfskarma.com slash Thanksgiving. You can get our core plays for only $5. Obviously, this is an NBA podcast, though. Um, so, you know, you guys might prefer the turkey promo, which is the 25% off, but both of them are available. You can find all of our links in the description below. Um, so, you know, anything you need, our, our free Discord, our, our pricing, you can get all that stuff below. Uh, but it is obviously dfskarma.com for everything there. We, I guess before we get in, if you do enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and you can drop any comments that you have below. I will answer any questions you have. Obviously a smaller four game slate, but uh, still plenty of questions potentially. So feel free to ask anything. Uh, as we get into the injury news here, we have uh, quite a bit, I guess, that we would say first off, Miami against Detroit, uh, Marcus Garrett, Duncan Robinson, both questionable. Markeith Morris has already been ruled out. Killian Hayes continues to miss time. Isaiah Stewart suspended two games for his role in that uh, whole fiasco with LeBron. So quite a bit of value there in Detroit, depending on what they opt to do in this particular game. For Los Angeles, New York, Austin Reeves, doubtful. LeBron James obviously suspended one game, so he will miss tonight uh, for his role in that. Then you have Taj Gibson as doubtful, Mitchell Robinson as out, and Derrick Rose questionable. Bones Highland and Zeke Nanji both out while Nikola Jokic is questionable. That's going to be a big one um, because, oddly enough, they've been saying for a little bit that he doesn't actually have an injury, uh, yet he still continues to pop up as questionable and then get ruled out later in the night. So that's just kind of an odd situation where it doesn't seem like anyone really knows what's wrong with him, uh, and we could honestly see him out again, but we're not really sure. The other big one, obviously, Luka Doncic, questionable tonight. So the slate is really going to break one way or another, depending on Jokic and Doncic both either playing, not playing, who's out, who's in, etc. And then Frank Natilakina also out uh, for Dallas. So pretty limited in um, what's available to us, I guess. The big things that, that I do quickly want to go over, um, instead of going specific position by position, I do want to talk about Dallas. I do want to talk about Denver, specifically what happens if Jokic and Doncic are out. And I want to talk about Detroit because right now it feels that we can take a guess, but we don't necessarily know what's going to happen there. So obviously Kelly Linux out. Uh, they don't really have a, a pure center to take over. We saw Trey Lyles. He, he played 11 minutes against the Lakers. But down the stretch, they ran uh, three guards with Sadiq Bey and Jeremy Grant playing the five. So I don't necessarily know if that's the route they go again because they're playing against uh, a big in Bam Adebayo, but I could definitely see them doing that. Um, just because of that, it could give Frank Jackson at 4,000 and Corey Joseph at 3,900 uh, both value. I think that Joseph is more or less locked into big minutes, so I don't have any issues with that. And then obviously Kate Cunningham, who's coming off his first career triple-double, he shot only 6 of 21 in that game, still scored 50 fantasy points, so a really good option there as well. Then obviously you have Sadiq Bey and Jeremy Grant, but Hamidou Diallo also saw an increased role um, 
only played 21 minutes in that game, but it was very clear that obviously he's playing more than he previously has. Uh, two of his last five games, he actually played less than 10 minutes and obviously got up to 21. Shot seven of nine. He did score 32 fantasy points, and we've really seen him score uh, fantasy points in a hurry in the past. So Emmanuel Diallo is another option. The big thing for Detroit, at least in my opinion at this point, is we're going to have to wait and see who the starters are. Good news, it's the first game at 7 o'clock. We're going to know starters. Um, but it just depends on how small they want to run, if they want to run Jeremy Grant at the 5, if they don't want to. That's kind of what this is all dependent on. Moving to Denver, which obviously is dependent on Nikola Jokic. If he's out, J. Michael Green at 3900 is just way too cheap. Uh, you're also going to have Aaron Gordon, obviously, get some increased value. Jeff Green locked into big minutes. Um, I, I prefer J. Michael Green. He's just better in terms of fantasy, but uh, Jeff Green is, is going to be locked into more minutes. Will Barton should take over more of the offense. He only played 28 minutes in the last game, but that was a complete blowout against Phoenix. So I do think that Will Barton makes an extremely interesting option. Whereas you have guys like P.J. Dozier, Austin Rivers. Can you play them, uh, especially for their prices? Yeah, I prefer Austin Rivers. It'll be interesting to see if he's starting or not. I know he's been playing uh, pretty solid minutes. But uh, both of them can be used. And then obviously, Monte Morris. No real issues whatsoever if you want to take a shot on him down at 4,500. Uh, I know Campazzo has played 27 minutes in each of his last two. I can't necessarily tell if that's more or less because of the blowout in Phoenix that he got those minutes. Um, I do think that he comes with quite a bit of risk, but at 3,300, it's not like he needs to really blow you away or anything. So I do think that he's a viable option. As we move to Dallas, a very clear cut that Jalen Brunson, is he's played extremely well with Luka Doncic off the floor this season. That's continued once again. If uh, Doncic is out, Jalen Brunson, 100% viable in all leagues. Tim Hardaway Jr., I, I feel like more of a tournament option, same as Dorian Finney-Smith. Um, but again, only four games, so I'm not sure how much cash you're playing uh, at that point anyway. Reggie Bullock is 3,500. He doesn't really do all that much while, while on the floor, but at the same time... Um, a reasonable option because you're just locking in the minutes. With Maxi Kleber back, uh, I do worry a little bit about Bullock in that type of capacity, but uh, I'm not overly concerned about it. Uh, I think Porzingis is the other obvious option. He is up to 8,500, which is you know a bit high at this point, but at the same time, you know plays very well without Doncic on the floor. He has his entire career in Dallas. That's been the case in the two games against Phoenix, in the game against the Clippers. He's scoring extremely well. So I do think that Porzingis is viable in all leagues. That kind of outlines the three um, more or less major um, major injury or, or suspension sources, I guess, at that point. Um, so I'll just quickly go over a few other guys at each position that I do think are viable if uh, I guess you can keep in mind of everything I just said I'm not going to go over those guys again uh, so this will just be a few guys at each position I I do think that Damian Lillard is completely fine he's starting to look better his price is moving up once again but he gets the solid matchup against Denver I'm not really overly concerned with that so if you're paying up I think he's fine I also think that Westbrook can be considered, uh, but not really my favorite play by any means. If Derrick Rose is out, Campbell <clears throat> Walker will make a really interesting option for just a, a little bit too cheap there. Um, and that, that's honestly probably <clears throat> more or less where I'm looking at for a point guard. I do, I do think that Eric Bledsoe is uh, viable, but again, strictly tournaments. He's back on one of his cold spells, and he's kind of a hot cold player uh, for the Clippers so I'm not necessarily or I guess he's not necessarily a guy that I'm really overly looking to attack when he's in one of those cold spells I think the obvious option at 5900 uh, Talon Horton Tucker is should be locked into the big minutes once again we saw him without LeBron before 52 and 42 fantasy points in 39 and 37 minutes uh, he, he's too cheap he's back down at 
I guess he's not down. He he was up, but uh, 5,900, it's it's just not expensive enough with LeBron out. So I do think that he is uh, a very viable option on this slate. As you move down a little bit more, Alec Burks came out of the starting lineup, I believe, last night. Um, you know, he's he's viable. He comes with a lot of upside. I do think that there's some risk there, but at only 4,200, I do think that he's at least a viable option with only four games. And then we, we already talked about some of the other guys like Rivers and uh, him and Diallo. Moving to small forward, Paul George, you're not really going to convince me that he can't be used. He's 10-3, uh, no Kawhi Leonard, obviously, and he gets a good matchup against Dallas. So 100% fine on that end. Uh, if you want to play someone like Jimmy Butler, I don't really have too many issues with it. He's just playing extremely well for Miami, and he gets a matchup against Detroit, who really doesn't have anyone that's going to slow him down defensively. As you continue down, uh, still no problems with someone like R.J. Barrett. Not necessarily my favorite option, but there is plenty of upside for his price tag. That's probably about where I'm looking at kind of the extra guys. If um, Duncan Robinson is out, I think that there's some upside in Max Struss, who's only 3,100, but really reliant on scoring. So if his shot isn't falling, you're kind of in trouble there. At power forward, Anthony Davis, I think it is obvious you can use him. Uh, same gun goes with Julius Randle. Both just come with enough upside. I wouldn't say either is necessarily my favorite option on this slate. I probably prefer Anthony Davis for the pure upside versus Randle, but both can at least be considered. I don't necessarily know if there's anyone else that I really want uh, to use at this point. I guess Larry Nance Jr., still only 3,600, comes with enough upside to be used in tournaments. I don't really trust him in cash games at this point, but, uh, you know, high upside player that at least can be considered in uh, GPPs tonight. Bam Adebayo obviously sticks out. Detroit has no one that's going to be able to match his size. The big issue is that there's been times that he's just been super tentative. He's kind of dealing with an injury, coming off two bad games against Washington. He struggled uh, against Utah before that. But at the same time, uh, Detroit just comes with literally no size to stop him. If Jeremy Grant's going to be the biggest guy on the floor for them, Adebayo should really just have his way in this game. Kind of same situation with Avika Zubak. Uh, gets the good matchup against Dallas. He literally just played them, put up 16 and 10. They just don't have the size to stop him. So uh, I do think that Zubak is an interesting option. And then you obviously have Nerland's Noel with Taj Gibson doubtful and uh, Mitchell Robinson out. That definitely makes sense to at least consider him. Um, you know, I, I do think that he can be used in cash games. So I, I would consider him personally in cash. Uh, I think he's probably better suited for tournaments just because of his position. But I think that he's relatively fine in cash as well. But that about does it for what I'm looking at tonight. Again, only four games. Uh, you can use either promo code uh, dfskarma.com slash thanksgiving gets you our core plays for thanksgiving for uh, five dollars or use the promo code turkey when purchasing a, a package and you will get 25 percent off of that good luck tonight hopefully everyone's uh, screens are filled with green and i believe sriracha will be back tomorrow uh, good luck